Hey guys, what's going on? It's Jack here from Jacktastic Tech, and today I'm going to be teaching you how to create a domain controller using Windows Server 2019. Okay, so the first thing we're going to need to do is go ahead and create a new virtual machine. I'm using Workstation 15 Pro by VMware as my hypervisor. However, you can use um, VMware, Hyper-V, VirtualBox, any of those hypervisors will work just fine. I'm just using this. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and select my installer disk image or ISO file. Uh, I'm going to select Windows Server 2019, hit next, and then select the closest thing, which is Windows Server 2016. Next, choose the file location. I'm going to choose here, and then DCO1. Next, 60 gigabytes, perfectly fine. And then we'll customize the hardware to speed the process up. So, 8 gigabytes of RAM, 4 cores and that should be good to go. So let's go ahead, hit finish, and then we'll power on this virtual machine and start installing Windows. So if you've never installed Windows Server before, it's pretty much the exact same process as uh, a regular Windows desktop environment, but it just has a couple more options. So you'll see those in a moment. All right, and so just like installing Windows regularly, uh, we just go ahead, select our language, time and currency, and keyboard input method, hit next, and install now. Then we're going to select our version. So we're going to have four options here. We have the standard, the standard with desktop, data center, and data center with desktop. Um, the desktop experience is like a regular Windows interface. The standard like non-desktop um, and the data center non-desktop, those are going to be command line interfaces. You're going to use PowerShell to do all your configuration. So we're going to use the standard evaluation with desktop experience. Then we'll just go ahead, accept the license terms, hit next, custom, and choose the drive that we're gonna install to. Once this process is done, we'll be able to create the administrative account for this uh, virtual machine, and then we'll be able to start configuring our domain controller. All right, and so now let's go ahead and give it a password. We're gonna use the password password as our password, and this is what it looks like. So, Let's go ahead and start doing some configuration. I'll send a control I'll delete to sign in, password. And then once we're in, we're gonna change some of the um, system parameters. So we're gonna change the name, the IP address, and the time, make sure all those are correct. So hit yes. First things first, let's go ahead and set an IP address. Uh, you wanna do this manually with all servers assigned static IP addresses. If it's a host machine, uh, or a client machine rather, uh, you don't need to set an IP address. You can utilize DHCP to do that for you. So we're going to go ahead and do 192, 192.168.1.100, uh, subnet mask 255.255.255.0, default gateway 192.168.1.1, and we'll do 127.0.0.1. That's the loopback address. So that'll point the DNS server, uh, or that'll point any DNS request back to this uh, computer itself. So that's all set. Next, I'm just going to go ahead and adjust the date and time format. So change date and time formatting. Go ahead, change it to this. And then now uh, we can go over to local server, click on computer name, change, and then we'll set it to be DC01. Hit OK, close, and restart now. Once this restarts, we'll go ahead and actually install the roles and features we need to make this a domain controller. All right, so now that it restarted, let's go ahead, send in control, alt, delete, put in our password. And then once the server manager pops up and everything's loaded, we can add the roles and features. All right, so hit add roles and features, click next, role-based or feature-based installation, select our server, and then all we need for this is gonna be the Active Directory Domain Services. Click Add Features, Next, Next, Next. Restart the destination server automatically if required. It's not gonna require one for this, but it's a good habit to build. This will take about a minute or two. Once this is done, we can actually promote the server itself to a domain controller. All right, so the installation has completed. We can go ahead, click on this little flag with the warning symbol and promote the server to a domain controller. 
We're going to add a new forest, which means to create a domain. And we're just going to do jacktastic.local. Hit next. We're going to set our DSRM password. And that's just going to, again, be password for instructional purposes. But uh, you would regularly want this to be something else. And you would want it to be documented. Uh, we can skip that. The net BIOS name will generate automatically. It's just a standard that Microsoft uses that no one else in the whole world uses. So once this is done, we can hit next. So hit next, uh, leave the paths as default, and then we're pretty much just gonna click through. Yes, it's gonna do a prerequisite check, making sure everything's all set. At this point, if you didn't set an IP address or something like that, uh, it would let you know here and then you would have to go change it and then you'd be all set. So now we can hit install. When it's done installing, we're gonna have to go ahead and restart this virtual machine. When that's done, we'll be able to actually configure Active Directory. In the meantime, let's go ahead and create a virtual machine for Windows 10 so that we can test out the Active Directory. So we'll do file, new virtual machine, typical. We'll select the Windows 10 ISO select Windows 10 there, uh, go ahead, throw it in the same area, we'll name this PC01, six gig hard drive again, perfectly fine, customize hardware, we'll give this two gigabytes of RAM, two cores is good, and finish. So let's go ahead, start this virtual machine up, and then when that's done, we can uh, install Windows. So our domain controller is about to restart. So it'll restart on its own. When it's all done, this will take a moment. We'll be able to actually create like user profiles. So let's wait on that. Just like every other Windows install ever, we're just going to go through this. The only thing that you need to make sure that you do is select uh, Windows 10 Pro as the operating system. Otherwise, you won't be able to join it to the domain. Uh, you can do it with Education, Pro, or Enterprise, not with Home. So we'll select Pro. The end versions are the same exact thing as the regular versions, except they have some media features removed. So once this is all done installing, we're going to set up an administrative account, and then we'll join it to the domain. All right, so now that the Windows 10 installation has started, we can go ahead and skip over this Cortana part and then start installing Windows like regular. All right, so first thing, start uh, select our region, our keyboard layout, skip adding a second one. We'll go ahead, set it up for an organization. That skips us uh, using a Microsoft um, online account, do a domain joint. We're gonna go ahead and just name it root. And then for the password, again, for educational purposes, we're gonna use password. Security question, first pet's name, dog, city, city, and nickname is name. Uh, Make Cortana the personal assistant, decline that, no, and then accept. Our domain controller is all done uh, setting up the roles and features, so we can actually go ahead and sign on to this local machine. Let's go ahead and sign right in. And then once the server manager opens, we'll go ahead, go over to the uh, Active Directory users and computers, and then we'll actually add a user account that we can sign into on our PC. So we'll go to users, and there's already a bunch of users here, so we'll actually just go ahead and create another organizational unit. We'll just call this domain users and make sure you untick protect container from accidental deletion because if you ever do want to move them, rename it or anything like that, it's just gonna be a huge pain in the butt. So let's go ahead and create a new user. We'll name it test user and the login will be test.user password password and we'll 
uh, untick the user must change password at next login. Hit next and finish. So once that's done, uh, the Windows PC will be on the desktop, we'll be able to change the name, set an IP address, and join it to the network. Okay, so first things first, let's go ahead and give it an IP address. We'll go over to change adapter options. Click here, properties, IPv4. The IP address we're going to start with is going to be 192.168.1.110. The subnet mask is all good, 192.168.1.1 and 192.168.1.100. So that's good, close, cool, that should be all set. And then we'll go over to our PC, go to properties, change settings, change, we'll give it PC01 and the domain will be jacktastic dot local hit enter and then it will prompt us to enter a administrative account so we're going to do administrator and then password welcome to the domain hit ok and then we'll be able to close this and restart Now that we've restarted, once it reboots, we'll be able to sign in as our test user account. All right, so let's go ahead, send a control alt delete, and then we'll sign in as test.user and the password of password. And you'll see that we're able to sign in here. And now we are on the domain. In future videos, we'll go ahead and add uh, group policies, such as drive redirection, print services, um, applications that install automatically, so on and so forth. But that's pretty much it for this video. If you guys liked it, go ahead, drop a like down below. If you didn't like it, drop a dislike. If you really did, tell me why in a comment. Tell me what you'd like to see in a future video. And until next time, peace out.